Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Land, and today I watched Deadpool 1 at 0.2 Fabric speed and found 13 new details that I'm pretty sure you haven't seen before. Now this one is gonna be a small but a sweet video, and a lot of the details will make you smile and appreciate the movie even more. So without wasting any of your time, let's begin. Number 1. Remember this epic gun battle from the opening of this movie? Well, in the opening credits, we see a super slow-mo shot of this gun battle in the background. But notice, <laughs> notice there's a keychain where a male figure seems to be going down on a female figure. We even see a business card for the number 5 Orange, a local strip club in Vancouver, which happens to be Ryan Reynolds' hometown. And this is the same strip club that they later visit to find Vanessa. Number 2. Now who doesn't remember Dupender, right? Well, he loves a girl, but that girl loves his cousin in Buntu, aka Depender's romantic rival. So in order to win the girl back, Depender kidnaps his own cousin Buntu and traps him in the trunk of his taxi, who we hear screaming at the top of his lungs. Now this screaming was actually voiced by Ryan Reynolds himself, but he wasn't given credits for it. Number 3. The first time Deadpool ever mentions Wolverine, Ryan Reynolds actually mocks Hugh Jackman's Australian accent. Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? I can't tell you, but it does rhyme with Pulverine. And let me tell you, he's got a nice pair of smooth criminals, Dan and that. Number 4. At the beginning of the film, when we see Deadpool in a gunfight, at one point Deadpool gets shot in his right arm. It actually creates a massive hole in his right arm and the suit. But notice this hole was actually getting smaller and smaller, showing us just how fast Deadpool's healing ability is. In fact, in a later scene, we see his flesh has perfectly healed up again. Kudos to the VFX team for paying attention to such small continuity details. Number 5. In the comics, Deadpool gained his healing powers from an experiment involving a sample of Wolverine's blood. Now notice in this movie, the serum Wade is injected with can be seen to have drops of blood in it, implying that those drops of blood came from Wolverine. Number 6. When Negasonic Teenage Warhead attacks Angel Dust, she fires up and as a result it burns her coat, and we see her yellow and black Axeman uniform. But there's a very clever hidden detail here. Notice just before Negasonic fires up, she tosses her phone towards Deadpool. This is because she knew that once she activates her powers, it will completely disintegrate her regular clothes. Therefore, even if she did keep the phone in her pocket, it would have been gone along with her coat, and that's why she handed it to Deadpool first. Number 7. During the final fight, Deadpool who uses the bodies of the soldiers he killed to spell the word Francis, the name of the antagonist. Now notice he used the severed head of this soldier to put the dot over the letter I. And I'm assuming this is the reason the director had Deadpool decapitate this soldier, because they were gonna need a severed head later. Number 8. In this same scene, we see a similar pattern of blood stain for each body, because Deadpool had to drag them, except for this severed head. The blood stain for this head is not spread enough. This is because unlike the bodies, Deadpool didn't have to drag it here. He could just simply lift it and put it there. Now the reason I'm counting this as a detail is because this scene is heavily CGI'd. Except for the bodies and the actors, almost everything in this shot is CGI, especially this severed head. So hats off to the VFX team who made sure each blood stain matches with specific body type or a severed head in this case. Number 9. On the highway where Deadpool confronts Francis and his henchmen, two signs can be spotted for Nicieza Street and Liefeld Street. Now Fabian Nicieza and Rob Liefeld both co-created the character Deadpool. And and of course, Liefeld has a cameo in the movie as well, along with the coffee mug that has his name on it. But for details like this, please watch my first breakdown with the link below. There's a few more road signs that pay tribute to more Deadpool creators. For instance, Fort McGinnis, Ditko Avenue, and Wernick Parkway. Now, Ed McGinnis is one of the illustrators that worked on the character, while Paul Wernick is one of the writers of this movie. Now, Steve Ditko didn't have a hand in this particular character, but he's one of the creators of Spider-Man, one of Deadpool's favorite teammates in the Marvel comics. Number 10. After being diagnosed with cancer, Wade tries to convince Vanessa to leave him. But notice the shirt Wade is wearing here. It has the logo for the Broadway show Rent. This is the official logo sold to promote the musical. And it's such a perfect easter egg too, because the musical features numerous characters with life-threatening illnesses, just like Wade Wilson. Number 11. When Francis brings Vanessa to the top of the helicarrier, notice she's wearing a red coat with white trim. This is Wade's jacket that he can be seen wearing at the beginning of the film, meaning Vanessa had kept it and used it regularly even after Wade left her and she presumed him dead. Number 12. The handgun Blind Al gives to Deadpool, which he later uses to kill Francis with, is a Colt model 1908 Vast Pocket 25 cal. But Weasel thinks it's 45 cal. 45 cal? Hell, 
like it. Indicating his knowledge about guns isn't that well in the movies. Number 13. Wade talks with Weasel about meeting new people in Jacksonville. Way worse than him when I was his age. I was traveling to exotic places, Baghdad, Mogadishu, Jacksonville meeting new and exciting people. Later he finds Bob, who he hasn't seen since TGI Fridays in Jacksonville. Bob? Wait. Oh my god, I haven't seen you since, Jacksonville. since uh, TGI Fridays. Fridays. Now Bob is a relatively common name, but if you are a comic book fan, you will know it's a nod to Deadpool's frenemy, a Hydra agent named Bob. Deadpool also references Bob's wife, Gail. How are the kids? Good? And Gail, she's still fixing that tuna casserole. So good. This is a nod to Gail Simone, a prolific comic book writer who has worked on Deadpool comics. And that's it. This would be my second breakdown of Deadpool 1 at point two fabric speed. If you're thinking I missed a lot of the hidden details, well, I didn't. There's a part 1 video of this movie where I found 19 new details. So please make sure to watch that video as well. Now please give me a thumbs up, it helps me a lot. And grab the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll see you lads in the next one. Oh, <laughs> my